If we were standing in the middle of a herbaceous garden or herbaceous border in mid-June, we'd be seeing the absolute zenith and prime of what the herbaceous plants had to offer. But standing in the middle of a woodland garden, a lot of people might think that actually the season is over, the wonderful magnolias and camellias and azaleas and rhododendrons have all been and gone and now there's nothing to see. The grass is growing, the trash is growing and everything's over. But actually that's completely untrue. So let's just take one genus. Uh, this is Stuartia. This one is Stuartia rostrata with these enormous white comedia-like flowers pink in bud with quite a bit of pink on the back of the petals. The flower buds themselves are encased in a sort of purple calyx or casing. And when you look, we're, we're standing underneath a tree that's probably nearly 30 foot tall. It's about 25 years old and it's absolutely plastered in bud and only a few of these buds have yet come out. It has these lovely trailing branches and come the autumn you'll get this very dark red, almost black autumn colour which is a key feature of Stuartia rostrata. There are several other species of Stuartia. I won't uh, show you those today but we'll just go on and look and see the range of different genuses of plants that are out in mid-June. Another whole range of hardy or ornamental shrubs which are coming into their best in mid-June are the Philadelphus and the Deutzias. And I'm standing in front of what I think is my absolute favourite Deutzia, Deutzia times hybrida strawberry fields. And it's absolutely perfectly out today. I think there are more than 50 uh, bumblebees and honeybees of various different species feeding on the pollen here and really enjoying this plant out at its best. In 15 or so years it's grown to about 10 or 12 feet high and it's one of those plants that can do with a bit of a trim from time to time to get the best flowering on the new growth. But what a sight that is in the woodland garden just beside a path where you can see and appreciate it. Something really spectacular for the middle of June when everything else is supposed to be over. I'm standing here overwhelmed with scent and looking in front of us we've got one of the Starax family. There are about a dozen species of them and they're all a bit different and they all come out um, in June. This is Starax formosanus, var formosanus. And when you look today at the sheer quantity of flowers on this 15, 20 foot tree with a similar spread, you can hardly see the leaves for the sheer quantity of flowers. And if you were to count the leaves on a particular branch, you'd find that there were four or five times as many flowers on each branch. The bumblebees are enjoying the scent as much as we are. And there are a few trees that are actually capable of producing this volume of flowers at this time of the year on a small tree. Absolutely fantastic. And just turning around behind us, uh, we see another Starex with a very different sort of flowers. This is another species, Starex hemsleyanus, and it has its flowers in these long racemes, sometimes two-pronged, sometimes one-pronged. The flowers are also scented and the bees are showing their pleasure at such a rich crop of nectar. The leaves are very different, the, the volume of flowers is very different, but again, a very spectacular small tree for your garden to give you something new and different to look at in June.
So you might think all the magnolias are over uh, by mid-June as well, but you'd be quite wrong. And here's just one example. This is Magnolia obovata pink flush, which has uh, very, very scented flowers. It's, it's a delicious smell we're, we're catching here and very large leaves. And when you look at a bud, um, as we've got round here, you see where the name pink flush comes from because um, there's the bud covering and then the first three or four outer tepals or outer petals are pink and as soon as it starts to come out these the, these pink outer petals flop down and you then hardly see them. And If we look back at the tree you can see that um, not all these magnolia co flowers come out at the same time. There's one that's over, there are several more buds to come and up through the tree there are various uh, stages of coming out. So the insects and the bees have got plenty to gorge on for a week or two here yet. And actually today I, I think I can find about eight or ten magnolias, mostly species which are flowering this late in the season and what a delight they are too. Another genus which comes into its own in, in June are the dogwoods and Cornus Cusa and Cornus Florida varieties particularly. This is the very gorgeous Cornus Cusa Satomi just coming out in, and these are not actually flowers, they're, they're bracts and as the sun scorches them more they will go pinker and redder than this. Um, but what a wonderful contrast between the pink bracts and the green leaves this is. Cornus take a long time to mature enough to flower properly and they can be a bit slow growing and frustrating in the garden but seeing this today in mid-June um, what, what an absolutely staggeringly good display this is. It's quite a large tree now after about 20 years and it's absolutely plastered in these bracts. As the sun goes in and out, um, they're slightly moving in the wind as well. But what a spectacle. Most people think that cornices are either white or cream, but actually Satomi is very much pink and it will get darker pink or even red yet as these bracts mature. So those are five different subjects for why you should get out in the woodland garden more often in June, not be put off by the tall growing grass, which we've all got to leave for another week or two yet, so the wildflowers can mature, set seed, and procreate for another year. Yes, of course, we'll cut the woodland garden, but there's no great rush to do that yet. There are a few weeds and grasses and wildflowers are not exactly interrupting our enjoyment of a wonderful cornice like this, strutting its stuff.